There we go. Hi, this is artist, entrepreneur, and art educator Eric McRae. Haven't uh, produced any new vlog posts in a while, so I'm back in the game. And I'm here in my studio on Saturday. This is uh, Art Explosure Weekend. And uh, my intern uh, on a fast track to becoming my uh, assistant, uh, Sabrina, is here with me. And we're going to, I'm going to introduce you to her, uh, Sabrina. And she attends uh, Wake County Public School. She's a, a senior. And she is, you finish school in a couple of weeks, correct? Yep. And mm -hmm. she's heading off to NC State. All right, okay. there you go. Go, go pack, you know. So don't you Duke and Carolina folks get to hate and stop the <laughs> vlog post. Uh, because it's really today we're going to discuss uh, this for our young people who are uh, high school, college age, who are considering career paths. And part of how I met uh, Sabrina was I uh, was uh, going around with the United Arts Council uh, addressing careers in the arts and uh, her teacher suggested her and matter of fact she stood out in her, in her, in her uh, class as someone who's really ambitious and, uh, and uh, pretty brave um, and then uh, we, we spoke and uh, she interviewed to come here and start an internship with me and you've been here now how long Sabrina? I think around six months. Yeah good six months all right so yeah. she's been working here and doing a fantastic job helping me in so many ways um, so this is my, my right hand woman here who really helps keep things going right here for me when I'm not available. And uh, so uh, Sabrina's going to share a little bit about um, her, her, I guess her decision making process concerning her career path. Uh, she's highly intelligent, uh, very skilled young lady who has lots of options when it comes to where she may go, but she has chosen the arts. So, you know, Sabrina, tell us a little bit about you and um, um, how you came about making decisions about your career path. All right. Well, I know that from an early age, I've always been interested in the arts. Uh -huh. I've always, you know, gone to art classes and done a lot of drawing and went to art school for a little bit in high school, like in Miami. Mm -hmm. But I never really, I was never really sure if I wanted to do that as a career or keep it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, so for that, I had to like open like my horizons and kind of like check out other career paths that I might be interested in. Okay. So I think in like 10th grade, I took like AP Biology and I was really interested in science all of a sudden. So uh -huh. I was like, maybe I want to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. So then when I moved And you have here, the aptitude to be a doctor. So it's not far-fetched that she could want to be a doctor. Some people say, I want to be president. Well, it might be a sketchy. Or you want to be a doctor, not everybody has the the capacity to do that and she does and uh, so that was a real option not just a, a pipe dream continue yeah i felt like i had the skill sets and enough of this interest to you know maybe make that my career mm -hmm. so when i moved here to north carolina i started working at well volunteering at wakeman hospitals oh wow that's cool yeah so i worked really hard. i like communicated with them and i got into their volunteer program and I would go there, I think, like, once a week for a couple of hours, and I would assist, like, the the patients mostly. I would interact a lot with them. Oh, and, that's like, great. assist their needs. And after going there for a couple months and seeing, like, the routine that a lot of doctors uh, went through and, like, how the patient and doctor interaction was and just their daily lives, I kind of, I couldn't really see myself in that space. As much as I liked science and I really, I really love my time at Wake Med. Mm-hmm. I couldn't see myself doing that like for like the next couple of years. Right, right. You know, it was it wasn't really something that was calling me, like that I was oh, passionate about. Okay. So and passion I, was key in your decision making yeah. process. It was um uh do you feel a, a calling to do it was important? And also, um, I think you, you mentioned could you could it be something you'd be comfortable with doing every day? Yeah. Because the reality is when you have a job or career it should be something that you enjoy. And you're going to spend a minimum of eight hours a day involved in that. So yeah, why be miserable? Yeah, like you want to work hard on, like hard on and get better at. So I don't know. I, I still love volunteering and I still helping other, like, helping other people out. But I feel like I would love to do that more as a hobby, you know, every once in a while. But Volunteerism. Also, yeah. Yeah, I also wanted to, um, I don't know. I, I felt like I needed to do something else. And, like, the arts was always in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. Kind of, even when I was, like, helping there, I was still like, so how could it be a doctor but still do art at the same time? Mm -hmm. So 
in a way, I like found myself trying to look for a career that will allow me to still do art in the future. Now, when I was coming up, medical illustration was real big. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's still, uh, I'm sure a lot is done on the computer today, but it's the same concept of blending medicine with the visual arts. And people see uh, being a visual artist or a creative person is strictly painting on canvas or mm -hmm. sculpture or something. But really, with the technologies present in the internet, um, there's so many ways for people who may not have necessarily the, the, the hand-eye coordination mm -hmm. uh, that an old master would have, but you know, not Leonardo da Vinci, but with the computers now, that level of creativity can be applied and, and, and positive results. Done. So, you know, when you mentioned medicine and art, that's that's viable too. It is, yeah. The arts, there's a bajillion things you can yeah, do, you know, yeah. graphic design or filmmaking, architecture, you know, just mm -hmm. visual artists, or industrial design. Like, there's just so many. I think the si design is everywhere in the world, yeah. you know, so you could really, you really could combine almost like any career with the arts. I know my daughter's uh, looking at uh, going to Garner. Garner Magnet. I went by there, and they have a uh, a three D uh, design class. Where literally, you're getting these uh, professional certifications while you're still in high school. That if, you, if I were to go take it today, it would cost me hundreds of dollars. It's in, it's bundled into their their program. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, I know some kids who've gotten a fake. Uh, what's that? A uh, Photoshop and uh, what's that other program? Illustrator, different mm -hmm. ones. They have uh, certifications on those different programs. So it's already bundled into the school system. So you, you young people out there who are um, looking to find a, a career path, you have counselors in the school systems, if you're in private schools, I'm sure they're there as well. Um, and then the importance of internship, like Sabrina had the, uh, the, the uh, uh, I guess the open-mindedness to go out and explore you know, sometimes folks feel like they have to make have to make a decision. Boom, and be in. You know, like it's finite, but really it's an exploration. So mm -hmm. you you went out and looked at White Med and saw by being there, is this something you want to do? Yeah. You know, so that that's smart, very smart. Um, I think getting out there, or even like you don't you don't necessarily have to volunteer or do an internship. Maybe like talking to someone who's already in the field. Yeah. And setting up like maybe an interview or something to like. So they could answer your like burning questions, and just mm -hmm. for you to get a feel of what it would be like, like to be in that career, like your day to day life. Because I think that's very important, you know. Right. I know a lot of students. I have a lot of friends in college that, you know, like constantly are switching their majors because they're still not sure what they want to do. So I think it's a really smart choice to start exploring, like your senior uh, or you, even your junior year of high school. I would suggest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your junior year, definitely by your yeah. junior year, you have some idea because by the time you get to uh, your senior year, if you're doing some visual arts, you want to make sure your portfolio is mm -hmm. geared in a certain fashion. You are aware of what that industry demands, or that you have a certain kind of equipment, i.e., laptops, or certain kinds of devices, uh, access to certain software, and it's not. And I mean, depending on your your economic position. It, I'm a firm believer it's best to own your own stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tables that we have here, I bought the, the art supplies don't go bad. I mean, this table I think I got in high school. This table I bought in college. I mean, because I was doing a lot of illustration that required mm -hmm. me to have a certain type of table. And so, you know, I was used to drawing on a kitchen table or whatever and or a desk. And then, and then so having a professional table that can elevate and I can mm -hmm. angle it properly so I can get the right view of my art. Made a world of a difference in the quality of my work and certain lighting. So mm -hmm. if you're you're doing something digitally, you want to own a, the right kind of laptop or yeah, the tablet, programs. the right programs. It, it doesn't have to be the, the Cadillac version. It could be the real simple stuff um, to at least get your feet wet mm -hmm. and learn. That's so much stuff can be downloaded for free. And, um, um, and, and so many tutorials on, on YouTube mm -hmm. now. My God, that's you know Google YouTube University. I mean, so much stuff to learn. So, so when you start, now you came aboard with me, and you uh, been working here for like good six months, and we've been talking about mm -hmm. business and materials and methods and marketing and PR and, and and the mindset of a successful artist and all those kind of things. 
what would you tell other young people? Because you're 18. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the 17, 18, 19, 16, 17, 18, 19-year-old who's gearing up to go to college. Mm -hmm. Okay, so along with the making the decisions about a career path, do you think it's essential that they definitely know without a shadow of a doubt, or is it still to have an openness as they head off to college? What do you think? I think they should still have an openness, because even as I've been like interning with you and everything, like I still need to find the best fit for me mm -hmm. in the career path I'm going to. So in at NC State, I'm going to be studying both art, like kind of like more towards art history, and business because mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to keep like a broad spectrum of skills right. just in case like I, I just wanted to have like a lot in my plate for when I get out into the work that's what I did in college I took a yeah. I was a, a illustration major and I was already learning graphic learning graphic design too and I'd already had experience in it mm -hmm. and I switched major to general fine art which left it open for me to almost build my own curriculum so I learned everything from printmaking and sculpture uh, learn how you airbrush. Computers weren't really a big deal back then. We're talking 30 years ago. 36, 35 years ago. So, all those things. So that openness is, is at a certain point, you're going to be forced to focus in. Yeah. But I think that's like later on, right. you know, in your final years of like your undergraduate degree, or if you're going to do a graduate program, at that mm -hmm. point you should be focused on something. But mm -hmm. I think it is very important for us to keep an open mind since we're so young and this is such a big decision in our lives. Very wise. You should be very open to looking at other careers or trying new things, looking yeah. at different jobs because even if you don't like those jobs, you are going to like grow in them and you are going to learn new skills. Like yep. at WakeMed, I learned how to properly communicate with patients, how to help them out, how to do basic first aid stuff, you know, so I, I learned a lot from it and even though that might not how like the first well I think the first eight can help me like oh yeah in, that's in that's, any career that's a life skill <laughs> I mean regardless yeah. of life skill you know if you, you have kids one day and somebody falls hurt yourself I mean you know mm -hmm. I mean I'm always I was always patching up my kids you know and uh, so everything and my my attitude everything you learn becomes part of the tapestry of who you are mm -hmm. and when it comes to skills it's almost like your utility belt you know you reach in and you grab a certain tool mm -hmm. as you need it so when you mentioned about talking to, to to customers, a lot of people in business and life, and especially in the arts, do not know how to properly communicate with people or how to present themselves. Yeah, and approach, and that's that's very important. So I, I think like those like public relations and like those like social skills are mm -hmm. important. Hopefully, a lot of you can develop that when you like go get jobs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are like it, just exploring. It, it gives you growth in itself. So it's on. It's a win-win. Like. Either, yeah. either way, you're going to be gaining something. That's right. why I think it is the best way to like really find a combination of things that you want. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're so if I could bullet point, you're saying um, get out there and explore, mm -hmm. be open minded, um, learn a broad level of skill sets, because you are paying for your education, so yeah. you want to get the most for your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come out there with like all the skill sets. So like when you're out in the workforce, they're like, "Can you do this and that?" He's like, "I can do all that and more." Like yeah. you want to be able to be like top of the list when you're trying to get a job. You know? Matter of fact, to show something about skill sets and and learning proper interview skills, Sabrina um, um, had inquired about an internship. Another young lady, um, I asked both of them to send me a portfolio. That's really basic. Show me you can do this. <laughs> You say you can sing, show me something you sing, and I, I shouldn't have to take your word. So I asked to see her work. Oh, the young lady didn't send a portfolio. A lot of kids talked. Talk is cheap. Then you and this other young lady approached me at the school you attend. I asked her for a portfolio, no portfolio. Sabrina provides a portfolio. Then I asked her, okay, let's come in the interview. I want to meet your parents and bring a resume. Resume. Now, I mean, resumes take different forms. Now, maybe digital, uh, maybe you have a hard copy. So she comes up with a hard copy resume, a sharp portfolio. Her mom and dad came in, represented her well, because I'm not just working with her, I'm working with her parents as well, because she is a minor, when technically 18, but 
at the time, you know, you're talking about a young person, so mm-hmm. do her parents represent her well to show that they're going to show the kind of support necessarily help her to be successful here? Mm-hmm. And I've had young people come here, and their parents were um, not impressive. Now, someone say, oh, well, you're holding the young person accountable by their parents' actions. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because the reality is a parent has to be an advocate for their child and represent their child and themselves well to believe that my relationship with her is not going to be an uphill battle when I'm trying to work with her. I don't want to war with her parents. I want her parents and I to be on the same team to help her to be successful long term. So her mom and dad and I, we have an understanding of what's what we're shooting for to help build Sabrina's career path and her, her career. So that's the kind of people you want to be as a parent helping your young person. Now I'm speaking as, the, as a seasoned adult, as a young person. My kids are younger than you. But the reality is all of us are working that, back to that, that proverb, it takes a village. People mock that, but nobody raises their child 100% alone. You spend more time in school with your teachers than your parents. And when you go to work, one day you're going to spend more time with your co-workers than your family members. So it's this communal kind of interaction where information is shared, and you learn from a broad range of people. Okay, so that's what you're doing now. I'm teaching you things. Your parents are teaching you. Your teachers are teaching you. And it's making you a more whole person. So as you go out into this world, you have more clarity and understanding. The kid that's not sitting in his chair does not have the same enlightenment that she's gaining because the things I'm teaching her, I didn't learn until I was in my 30s and 40s. And you're learning at 18. What a deal. I mean, so, so in closing, what would you tell your peers, 16, 17, 18, get ready to finish high school, which, how should they be thinking? And what should they be doing right now? I think they should be proactive, you know, and trying to find that career. Speak a louder. They should be proactive and they should be unafraid because the worst thing that can happen is someone tells you no. That mm-hmm. is the worst, yeah. you know? If you just keep trying, then you're eventually going to get that yes and you're going to grow in that. You know, like the people say, like, if you... If you fail, you're going to gain wisdom. Yeah, you yeah. Know? trial so and error. Just don't be afraid. Be proactive and stay focused in what you want to do because this is a big decision for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's not the end of the world if you make mistakes because part yeah. of mistakes is the learning process. Like, gee, I don't put my head in an alligator's mouth. Make mm-hmm. note, don't do that again, you know. But then, I mean, certain things you do, you take risks. You're like, wow, I went for the brass ring and I got it and I achieved certain things. So um, I think that's an excellent attitude. And being proactive is uh, when I was, my, co- my teacher in high school asked me about I going to college. I said, yeah. She said, as you look, i like, uh, no. Uh, are you, how are you going to pay for college? Uh, I don't know. What are you going to do? Uh, I don't know. Because I had this passivity that I expected my parents to do certain stuff. And that's when I came alive and awake to my personal responsibility. And she's saying to you, is get off your hump, you access the internet. I mean, it's all sitting out there. And then go out and look for internships, working opportunities, um, educate yourself about career possibilities. It's all out there at the tip of your finger. It's into your fingertips nowadays. And you don't have to go to the library. I mean, poke on your device and the answers come to you. But you do have to get up and go out and interact with people, talk to people and try things. So being proactive is key. Yes. And, and have you found that work for you? Yes, I have. I mean, I've done a bunch of volunteering events. I got this internship with you, you know. Mm-hmm. Hopefully while I'm at NC State, I could get like another job that reaches like my skills and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just being proactive, I think is my best advice for people. Because I know a lot of them are very passive and they're like, I'll figure it out later. But you know, like time's running out. And right. the sooner you start, the better it's going to yield for you in the future. Okay, you said something key. You said volunteer, working here. Some kids say, well, I'm not working for anybody unless they pay me. I want money now. (laughs) How do you address that? Assuming this person is in a financial, bad financial straits. 
what do you say to somebody who's very much like, I'm not helping anybody unless they pay me? Well, I think you, like, doing volunteer and internships, I think that in itself is an enriching opportunity. And by giving you those experiences and those skills, trust me that in the end, it's going to put you on the top for you to maybe earn more money in your job. You know, by saying, like, I've worked here, I've volunteered here, I know how to do this, this, and that, that yields more money in the future. You know, that's going to come back to you. So I think just showing that you have a kind heart and that you do things to enrich yourself rather than for the money is eventually going to give you more, like, more yeah. money in the future. Yeah, you're investing, you're investing in your future by getting <laughs> knowledge now. Yes. getting experience now, which a lot of young people is, yeah. oh, I have a degree from Wake Tech, or I've got a degree from NC State, or, you know, the university or whatever. They said, well, do you have any experience? N-O. Mm -hmm. No. So the thing is that experience gives you credibility. I was I was yeah. working and getting, I didn't do internships when I was coming up, but I was always working for somebody getting experience while they paid me. I was mm -hmm. fortunate in that sense. But when I went to places, I already had a resume. By the time I was 20, 21, I already had a resume where I started working on 16. So I think being selfish hurts you in the long run. Yes. Or being too materialistic too soon hurts you in the long run. You have to give to get. And um, I, my old bishop used to say, I think the person whose hands so tight holding on to stuff, it's the same person who can't receive anything because the hands always are closed. So, you know, something that open your hand to give to somebody else for something to come back into your hand. Mm -hmm. So in Sabrina's case, she, she works for me with no compensation right now, but I plan on, we have plans for the future that are quite lucrative for her, uh, but I had to see if she had the right stuff for me to, to take the risk on her. And Shane, wait, she's, she's evaluating whether I have credibility for her to continue to stay here. So when you intern with somebody, you're not obligated. You're not an indentured servant. You're not a slave. So at a certain point, you realize, hey, this is not working. What you do? You left and went somewhere else and try something new. Yeah. So it's all that kind of that exploration of a hurry, scurry, and, and, and exploring and seeing what's there and what's best for you and finding that perfect match. So. On that note, we're going to close up. Thank you, Sabrina. And uh, we're going to probably make some more videos in the future. She's a very intelligent, very wise young woman. I think she has a lot to offer to people, uh, young people getting going. We're going to talk about college and financial aid and uh, some of those things, too, as well. So um, keep in touch. You can see these videos on LinkedIn, YouTube, also on Facebook. I'll share links on LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, so you can look for me under Eric McRae, M-C-R-A-Y, uh, also uh, under McRae Studios, um, and then also my website, ericmcrae.com. Um, so thank you so much, and let's keep in touch, and take care.